Where are my little cheap sunglasses? How much did those cost? The furry. These came from, you know how you walk around in the park sometimes, they be having little festivals and stuff down there and somebody was handing them out. And I just kept them. What year was that? Ooh, pre-pandemic. It's been some time ago. It's been some time ago, yeah. Sorry is all that you can say. My God, I didn't smudge them more. The words don't come easily. Like sorry. Y'all know that? Did, 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 do the right time. I don't know what she say right there. So I have a free taco meal. I have one of these punch cards. And so, you know, I can go and get me free. Thank you very much. Hey, Shirley Craig. Hey, girl. Hey, hey, niece. What's up, Monica Parker? I see you in here. I see you in the building. Ryan, do you have deodorant on before we get to the gym? I don't want you knocking the people out. I do. Okay. Because we already have enough people that be walking around the gym. Hey, Crystal Currents. Hey, girl. What's up, North Carolina? Um, we already got, they already have enough people in the gym that be smelling. And I don't mean in a good way. Hey, boy. Hey, what's up, Carlton Ash? Hey, girl. Hey, what's up, Sunshine? April. Is it April Sunshine or is it Sunshine April? Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, boy. Hey. I guess I need to put the directions in. It's a shame I still don't really know my way around this side of town. Yeah, how long you been over here? Six months. Now, when I used to go <clears throat> places on that other side of town, when I lived over there in the Hapeville area. Where is Hapeville? Hapeville is on the south side. It's a it's a it's a small nook community between um, College Park, as the Atlanta natives say, Collar Park, and um, downtown. Okay, there's a there's a major thoroughway that goes through called Metropolitan Parkway. Everything that falls into the stereotypes of what it means to be a black person. <laughs> happens over there on Metropolitan Parkway. Amen. It used to be a former strip, I mean, not strip, prostitute strip. Amen. Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart. This is my gay friend, Ryan. <laughs> Listen, let me just tell you now, before you become my friend and be trying to be all in these live videos, you have got to be secure in your sexuality because I'm definitely going to talk about you being part of the community. Amen. I'm going to talk about you, you know, taking it in the ass. How long you been in the community? Uh, I'm going to talk about you taking it in the ass. How long you been in the community? I've been in the community since I was, hmm. Since I was 22. Let me, let, let's, let's talk about that. Good day, <laughs> thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart, and this is the Facebook live version. It will be on YouTube later. Of so much to say. These are my thoughts in my voice on black shit, white shit, gay shit, and everything in between. Speaking of, I first came into this community, and I don't say came into the lifestyle, or because I, I don't subscribe to that word, lifestyle, right? But when I first came into the community, meaning I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. <laughs> what state were you in? I was in Atlanta, Georgia. I was in Georgia. That's the state. So you can't live your life in Baltimore? Well, no, it's not that I couldn't live my life in Baltimore because, you know, a lot of the kids do come here to Atlanta to sow their oats. Mm -hmm. But no, it wasn't that. Like, I just, I was 22. And see, prior to that, I was trying to um, suppress it. I thought I could control it. You I thought, you thought I straight. Well, I thought I could manage my sexuality. Amen. And I think a lot of men who go off and get married because see i could have been one of those men that went and got married because my last girlfriend was in college and she used to talk about being married and having kids and me stopping on my way home to get pampers and shit but i realized no i don't want to do that you're at a crossroads craig you're either going to go to the gate left or to the straight right and i decided to go left on that fork amen so um 
you know, but I think a lot of men will end up married or, you know, in relationships with women because they're not being truthful. You ever regret it? With themselves. No. You know how some people say being straight is easier? I think people who say that are people who are gay people or queer people who don't have a, a good balance of straight and gay friends. Because a lot of times gay men will say, if I was straight, I'd already be in a relationship with kids. Yeah, you may be already be in, would have some kids, but straight relationships are no more seamless than gay relationships. I think people who think that think because think that because they don't really they don't spend enough time with straight people to realize it because a lot of gay people when they come into the community they only have gay friends they only go to gay parties they don't do anything outside of the community really right she done went straight to that stop sign did you see that mm -hmm. so and then like and then i've heard gay men say yeah but like all of my relationships that i had with girls I, it wasn't all of this drama and this kind of stuff and i'm like well how many relationships did you have with girls and so and they be like, well, I had two girlfriends. I'm like, okay, and how many men have you dated? Well, 10 or 12. Okay, the ratio is <laughs> off, niece. If you had dated 10 or 12 women, then you would have experienced a little more. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't compare the two. You didn't really spend a lot of time dating women. You've only dated men, really. I hear it a lot. They always tell I know. They think that the grass is greener on the other side. But here's the thing. When I first came into the community, I was here in Atlanta. And I remember I was just telling Carlton this the other day. When I used to be driving around, the gays used to be so bold. They'd be trying to get my attention on Peachtree. Hey, push it, roll your window down, pull over. They'd they be trying to talk to you, trying to holler. And I was like, uh-uh, no, my kid. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, you're taking me too fast. You know, I was very much so, you know, just still trying to figure, figure myself out. And so um, I came on down here and, you know, so I moved down here in May of 1998 and I had to figure myself out I, I you know I couldn't just jump off into the gay waters so I say about July August I, I was figuring myself out <laughs> so may I moved here around after, after your birthday right right, right. so around around uh, around a uh, I was only here maybe about two three months and I realized yeah I am in fact a part of the community so you were a punk in college, though, huh? <laughs> now, listen, if you are not part of the community, you cannot say the word punk, okay? It's like the N-word, black people. You don't want I white was. people. You were a punk. You were taking you were taking it in the ass in college. Kind of what? You were taking it in the ass in college. You know, kind of Rand, Randy used to say that to me. Like, when, right. when, when I first came out, I met Randy. I met Randy in, like, 98, 99. And so he would say to people all the time, he'd be like, um, so, Ryan, um, does your family does your family know that, that you're gay? And you'll be like, yeah. They, he, 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 you'll be like, yeah, they know. He'll be like, so your family knows that you take it in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you stupid. Ask Randy why he wasn't at work yesterday. Uh, he wasn't at work yesterday. Mm. Unless that was a long lunch, lunch break, but that was three hours. Really? Three hours. So you were dating in college. I was. See, I was too afraid to be doing all of that. Cause see, I thought I could still control it. I thought if I just suppressed it and thought real hard and good, I wouldn't I wouldn't have the attraction to guys. I thought it would just go away. Yeah. I think yeah, my first gay relationship was in Ohio. How old were you? Maybe like twenty four. Twenty four? I was twenty two. I thought you were younger when you first had your first experience. Well, I was dating in college, but my first relationship was until after I graduated. So what was the first time you Dated a guy, had sex with a guy. How old were you? Twenty. Oh, so you were younger than I was. So you were twenty. That still is pretty late, though. Yeah. You know, Cause you know, cause these gays today. Well, these gays today are different. Baby, they out here sucking dick and carrying on at twelve. They clear about who they are, amen. They are I clear. Had that courage. Yeah, no, I didn't have that kind of courage. But yeah, so I was um, 22. The very first guy that I ever went out with, I'm gonna put the air on. The very first guy that I ever went out with, um, I was 22 years old. And um, yeah. But no, I don't have any regrets. You asked me if I ever regret. No, the only regrets that I do have, and I don't really live my life in regret, but the only regret that I can say I may have is I would be more of myself 
in college. If I could go back and do college again, I would be more of who I am. Do you still, do you still, uh, do you know the boy? Your first? Yeah, that's... That, is he still around? That Negro still walking around here. I said Negro. That Negro still walking around here. I ran into him one time and, you know, <clears throat> you know, I had blossomed and stuff. Because, you know, it does get better, niece. It gets better with age if you're taking care of yourself. And that thing was like, oh, you look good. And I had started working out and everything. So he was trying to holler. I'm like, um, I am not interested. Please back up. He was literally trying to date and go out. And so I just wasn't really feeling him. And I wasn't really sending like he was texting and stuff like that and then uh he finally said to me one day craig if you're really not interested just say that like don't have me like pursuing something and you know you're not interested i said well i never said that i was interested in anything when you had my attention but yeah you still have sex say what you still have sex with him no i did not now when we were when i first started going out with him we shonged that's not sex. For those who don't know what Shong is, like Shong is, we just kind of like play, laid and played. You know. The baiter word. Baiter? There's a new word out here called baiter. I, I don't know what that is. Yeah. But yeah, it's like I used to, you know, it, he was the first one who tasted my uh, cookies. I talk about this in my first book. I had been to work that day. I had been to work. You didn't take a shower? I had not taken a shower. I mean, I showered that morning. Eight hours later. Honey. And he, he listen, he was, listen, he, listen. You eight hours later, you didn't sat in somebody's seat for eight hours. I sat in a chair all day long. <laughs> I had walked all around the building and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, all that friction that happens down in your, in your panties mm -hmm. and your... <laughs> and your underwear. So I had been around the building all day that day. And um and I got home. I mean I got to his house and it was it was those warm months too. And I had gotten back to his house and um baby he just he some people like a little moist a little a little a little must. Now I wouldn't have let him, you know, go down there if I had been to the bathroom or anything like that, but so eight hours you never used the bathroom? No, I I hadn't shat. <laughs> I hadn't shed, but I will tell you this because I was so I was such a novice at the time. I was very green. I didn't I didn't let him kiss me though. I wouldn't let him kiss. Me. <laughs> I was a little peppery. I was just a little ripe, just a little ripe. But you know, some people like a little ripeness, a little pepper, a little ghost, uh, a little ghost pepper chips <laughs> from Trader Joe's. Some people, hey Amy, hey girl, hey. Some people like a little pe a little pepper, and so um, so yeah. So he was um down there just licking and, and 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 carrying on, and so every time he tried to come up to kiss me, I would put my face under the pillows. Uh uh, you ain't kissing me, Negro. Uh uh. Now, oh. now today, you have no boundaries. I have boundaries, but you that ain't that ain't one of them. Hmm. You never in the right lane, dude. I know. I need to get over. Um, so, okay, so tell about your first experience. <coughs> <laughs> getting in, getting here, had me, um, lifting up my skirt. My, I was in college, um, my first year, well, not my first year, but I was staying in the dorm, of course. Um, oh, only, you were messing around in the dormitory? I only knew a, gay, a couple of gay folks or whatever. Um, yeah, and... Go ahead. Um, the guy, he lived on my floor. Um, and... How'd you know he was part of the community? He wasn't. And y'all messed around? Mm -hmm. No, he was a part. He was he was a, a part of the community or adjacent. No, he's married with three kids. So is Rocky in my second book. He married too. He ain't got no kids. But baby, he used to take this dick like a jam. If you missed that, you missed it. But anyway, go ahead. We went to this party, you know, um, had a lot of alcohol. Somebody said, baby, I love me some cute ass Ryan. All the time I said, thank you. Um, so y'all went to a party. He has some, so you trying to say that he, the only reason y'all mess around because he's straight is because he has some alcohol. I mean, we were drunk and high, so. 
you think you're the first person he had met, the first guy he had messed around with? I don't think so. Right, but then he was gay. He was at least bisexual. He was gay adjacent. Go ahead. You know, just the first time, went to his room and... This we, was your first experience? Yeah. Correct, correct. I'm looking. Go ahead. He thought I was going to run into this... Uh, what kind of car is that? Ford something? I know. She would. I would have fell out the car. So would I. We just split the insurance money. <laughs> Shit. Go um, ahead. But where am I going with this? Um, so y'all so went. Came from the went party. To, came to the party. Went to his room. Had some more drinks. Just you and him in the room. Yeah, because he had a solo room. I didn't have a solo room. It's called a single. Go oh ahead. God, man. So you had a single, and he went had to, a single. Right. Went to his room. Um. You know, and then, you know, took a shower. Wait, 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 wait. Why did you take a shower? He asked you to take a shower? No, we took a shower together. How so did that asked, happen? Because we were both, like, sweaty. Because it was hot. This was like Y'all got in the same shower together. Yeah, this was, like, September. This boy was not straight. Well, he's straight now. No, he's suppressing that, like Donnie McClurkin. There's a new pastor. You see that new pastor? I saw it. What's fans? his name? Somebody sent me the whole video of him fucking and getting his dicks up. He got OnlyFans or something like that? And he a pastor. Go ahead. So wait, so who suggested to get in the shower? He did. He was just like, oh, you know. I said, I'm sweaty from the, um, that party. Because it was hot as all get out. You know how the parties were back in college. No, yes, I do. But I don't. I still don't understand how he convinced you to get... How, you, how you're convinced that he's straight. And he well, said... Well, I mean, this is like 20... 20 some years later I mean I I see his Facebook post and he's married that, with kids that doesn't make him straight see that's why the straight people be confused well he, he's DL I guess c correct he's abstaining from gay sex that's what he's doing Donnie McClurkin if Donnie is really abstaining but go ahead leave Donnie alone cause see that's why people walk around here confused thinking that you can just be gay today and then tomorrow you you no longer gay that's what the girls do somebody said now wait a minute let's talk about the past of Michelle Franklin well, that's what the girls do, but you know, that's the, that's they have different rules. Women have different rules. A woman could be a full-blown lesbian in college, and then she graduate college, get married with kids, and nobody ever talk about her being a lesbian. They just say, you remember when Jennifer used to mess around with Jackie? She ain't no lesbian, but let a guy do it. Oh, no, he's a punk. He's gay. You know he gay. Oh, girl, you know he gay. You watch Grownish? They have this storyline going right now. Really? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen Grownish since uh, probably the first season. So he said, let's get in the shower. So we got in the shower. Um, Somebody said, sexuality is a sliding scale. He's straight-ish. <laughs> That's why I said gay adjacent. <laughs> Go ahead. He's at least bisexual. I mean, he DL or whatever you want to call so it. So he said, let's get in the shower. Yeah. So he took a shower and, you know, one thing led to another. And First of all, ain't no one thing led to another. Because once you get in the shower, you're naked, he's naked. It's right. all fair game now. Mm-hmm. And it happened more than once. But I was in college. These are my bangs for those of you who may be watching for the first time. I was in college, you know. So, so y'all got in the shower and got the sucking and carrying on? That's... Did y'all actually have intercourse? We did. In the shower? No. Oh. You gotta, you no. Know, hopefully pat, pat down. You know, it's hard to have um, intercourse in the shower. No, it's not. And if, if, if you're using protection. <laughs> now, if you're in there fucking raw, no, it's not hard. Because, you know, you know, things get dried out because, you know, because it's not slick. Right. And who want to use soap? Because I feel like soap going to give me some sort of like... Soap will burn. It get down right. in your pee-pee hole. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. But, no, you, you got to... Listen. You know, some of these folks want to use that peppermint soap. What's right. <laughs> right. I'd be like, what is that smell? Uh-uh. But wait a minute, that, that sex in the shower is good. I agree. That's some that's some good sex. Mm-hmm. Um That's better than beach sex. Ooh, I ain't I ain't never done it on the beach. Now Carl, I was trying to get Carlton to do it on the beach the last time we were in Mexico. And he said, like, uh-uh, we can't do that. I'm like, oh my god, you such a prude. Don't be doing Carlton like that. He was like, uh-uh. But anyway, but I heard that sex on the beach look, sounded like a drink. Sex on the on a beach with all that sand can be uncomfortable and just, you know, sand well, here everywhere. So, you know, if you have a blanket. So you've done this before. You sound like you're talking from experience. I'm speaking from experience. 
So you and this boy used to uh, mess around and stuff in, in college? Yeah. And he seemed experienced. He did. Mm. And I was cool with it, you know? Cause My God, today. You don't tell, you know, I ain't gonna tell your best. Well, you weren't gay at that. You didn't identify as gay at that point, were you? You gotta give me air quotes? Well, because I'm saying, like, <laughs> if you're having sex with the same sex, you're at least bisexual. Right. Or, or something. Um, gay adjacent. But what I'm saying is, were you a- acknowledging to yourself at oh, that time no, that you were gay? Or were you... Okay. My college. That's when I went to an all-white college. Yeah. Oh, child, it wouldn't have mattered over there. <laughs> I wouldn't have gave a damn with them people, though. <laughs> but see, at an HBCU... I was, I, yeah, so, so that's what I mean. Like, I would be more of myself. Like, if I if I could go back to college and if I could go back to 18-year-old Craig, like, they didn't get all of this personality from me. You only got this if you knew me personally. Like, my friends who knew me personally saw all of this. But, like, if I didn't really, like, I was very shy. Um, and I understand now, looking back, that my shyness was connected to my... Um, sexuality i was trying to cover and hide my sexuality so i wasn't as outgoing i wasn't as outspoken i just tried to stay to myself and to my little friends because i didn't want nobody asking well are you gay is he gay like i didn't want nobody picking trying to figure that shit out because i was still trying to figure it out up here for myself and so um but once i realized you know once you know your name once you get to know your name and you clear about it you know it was after i had graduated college i became really comfortable with my skin so if I could go back and be more of who I was in high school and in college, I think I would have been. I feel like these kids in high school have it so much better than, you know. Yeah, because they got gay and straight alliances and shit now in high school. You know, I was getting, you know, those gay taunts back then. You know, nowadays you don't, you wouldn't get that. What, like friends? You like, said, oh, he's a fag. You know? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, and then. Um, yeah, I mean, my thing is, I got that sometimes. I didn't get that a whole lot in school. I got that more from family mm. than I did in school. You know what I mean? I agree. Um, and that's why I say, you know, sometimes family can be very toxic. Um, so I got that. I didn't. I didn't. I just feel like your family should be the place where you're covered and you're loved unconditionally and with that you know the way where you're supposed to be fortified but for me i just felt like I, and i i did feel fortified but i still felt like family was also the center of a lot of the the emotional scars that i got around my sexuality like being uncomfortable with my sexuality and stuff like that you know because it was my sister or cousins that were like oh you fag or stop acting like a girl or you know they, they were the ones who were saying shit like that and um, and now they're the ones that be needing to borrow money. Hmm. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello? They need some of this money from these gay books I'm selling. <laughs> you don't hear me, though. <laughs> and um, and so that's why, you know, like when I see people like a Todrick Hall or the or the black boy that was on that show, The Four, his name is Vincent, dark skin guy. He was a singer. Like when I see people like that, what show was he on? The Four. What was that show? It wasn't that show called The Four. It was a singing show. It was called The Four. Wasn't that show called The Four, you guys? I never heard of <clears> that. You ain't never heard of that? The Four. Well, the point is, he and Todrick Hall, to me, they, they represent black folks, black gay men, who have a very complicated relationship with the black community. Because it's almost like... Um, They've, they've distanced themselves from the black community because they were they were tormented. Even Billy Porter. They were tormented as little gay boys. They were called sissy fag punk. The church hurt them. Family members hurt them. Neighbor, neighbors hurt them. That kind of thing. And so now that they've gotten older, it's almost like they've gravitated more to the white community. Mm. You never noticed that? So that's where they make money. That's, that's where they love. make money, but also because the white community didn't hurt them for being gay. Growing up in the church, they were they were sitting in the church and hearing them say that you're going to hell because you're gay, this, that, and the other. Then you hear it from your neighbors, 
calling you gay and, and taunting you and hurting, you know, family members and da, da da da. So when you so when you go get older, you drift away from that kind of stuff. Like Todrick Hall and his mom had a very, very um up and down kind of relationship. I just looked at his documentary on um Netflix. No, it's not on Netflix anymore. It's on I think I watched it on Hulu or one of them places. One of them places. Right. But he um he talked about it on there. His mom is on there. He talked about how you know, um, they had a very, very estranged relationship and they didn't talk for a long time because she was really into the church. And so like when I see some of these black gay boys that gravitate to white, to the white community and they only date white guys and all of their friends are white, I used to really, really judge them and be like, oh, so you really think you white. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And in some cases, that's true. But then in other cases, it's not just, it's not always that. Sometimes it's because the black community scarred them you know they, they they hurt them so badly that they had they felt like they had no choice but to leave the black community behind what about they only what about they grew up in a white neighborhood and was only around white people well that's a different conversation too for sure but anyway listen ryan and i are about to, uh, ryan and i are about to go in here to this gym when i come back out of here when we come out of this gym we're gonna jump on my youtube live amen because we have some things to discuss. Okay, we're going to finish this conversation. So we will be on YouTube in about an hour. Okay, bye.